All righty. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second annual Masters Alumni Career Panel with UCD Geography in collaboration with the UCD Geography Society. My name is Sean. I work closely with I, I work closely with the Geography Society and the School of Geography, and I'm very happy to be involved in this event again. Um, I would like to introduce Alana McQuaid and Shepherd Handybold, who are working alongside me on the UCD Geography Society to facilitate this. Um, and I think now I will give an opportunity to our six panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, just a very quick, you know, name, what what masters you did, where you're coming, from, uh, where you are now. So if you guys want to take that away there. Yeah, happy to jump in. Um, so my name is Jonathan Kelly and I'm a graduate of UCD uh, School of Geography. So I did the MSc Critical Geographies um, back in 2017, which is making me feel very old now. Um, but since then, I've gone on to work for Deloitte Ireland. Um, so Deloitte multinational company um, spanning various different businesses as well. Um, I specialize in consulting and my particular specialization is kind of operational excellence. So that would be looking at supply chains and stuff like that and, and seeing how cost improvements can be made. And then I also do plenty of charity work in conjunction with Deloitte as well. So working with charity partners in Dublin and abroad, and it would have helped facilitate our first virtual volunteering during COVID. And I was also uh, Deloitte Ireland's One Young World um, representative at back in July, 2021 as well. Hiya, um, I guess I'll, I'll jump in now as well. Um, my name is uh, Catherine. I did the master's in geospatial data analysis um, back in 2018, 2019. And now I'm working for Esri Ireland um, and I'm doing their graduate program, which is nearly finished. <laughs> it was an 18, 18 month thing. So you get to do different, various different rotations. So I had a chance to work in sales, marketing, uh, professional services and um, tech support. So I've kind of gotten a mix of everything and I'm hoping to go down the, the sales route of things, but um, it still haven't fully decided yet. But uh, yeah, that's me anyway. Thank you. Yeah, I might jump in just because um, uh, similar to Catherine, I did the geospatial data analysis um, course and um, just graduated um in november i suppose so the most recent year um i am now working for arup um they are like a multinational engineering consultancy company so um i am working as a geospatial consultant and the kind of work that we would do is we work on road and rail projects but also some earth observation stuff like changing coastlines and why and how that, that kind of thing might happen. So happy to be here. I'll pass it on to the next person. Oh, okay, I'm, uh, 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 I might ju just jump in as well. So thank you, first of all, Sean, the Ge Ge Geography Society, to, to, to have me here to, today. My na name is Giorgio, and I, 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 came, I came from Italy originally. I did my master back in 2020, 2021. I did geopolitics and the, the, the global economy. Uh, it was kind of an interdisciplinary program. Uh, subjects ranged from uh, po political geography to po political economy to so so sociology. So it was very, very interesting. Uh, as like as, um, as all, all, all the knowledge that I, I, I acquired last year. And now I'm currently working as uh, 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 assisted uh, 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 analyst with two to three, helping non-profit organization to have impact on 
in the island. Uh, I'm currently like in the in the department of of consulting and and research. So yeah, uh, 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 so yeah. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'm Morgan. Uh, I'm from Switzerland, and I did the uh, critical geographies masters. Um, and now I am a PhD candidate in urban uh, urban studies and gender studies, and I'm a teaching assistant at the University of Geneva. And I really like the program, so I'm looking forward to for, you know to talking about this. Um, well, talking about in this session. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Natalie. I'm originally from the US. I graduated just last fall with an MA in geopolitics in the global economy. Um, with geopolitics, it is, as Giorgio said, really interdisciplinary. So I took courses in a lot of different subjects, um, which is how I kind of fell into cybersecurity. Um, so right now I work as a client service advisor at Aon in Dublin. And they're a multinational company. Um, they do primarily professional services, but they are working on building kind of a footprint in cyber. So I work within the financial team, but focusing exclusively on cyber solutions. Um, I kind of do a lot of different things. It ranges from advising clients on their cyber risk and mitigation um, and kind of project management for some of the products and solutions that we offer. Um, this week has been a lot on Russia and Ukraine and kind of analyzing if the threats of cyber war and the sanctions are going to affect our clients and what those effects will be. So, Alrighty, well, thank you all so much for that. It is lovely to get a sense for sort of where you come from when it comes to talking about geography and where you find yourself now when it comes to careers and pathways. So I think we have the potential for a very interesting discussion tonight. Um, what I'm going to do now with the panel is I'm just going to throw a couple questions out there. Um, if any if any question speaks to anyone in particular, if there's anything in specifically you want to speak on, feel free. Um, so yeah, we've got plenty to discuss. I think where I want to start is sort of, you know, if we go back to, you know, you coming into your master's or coming into your undergrad or coming into geography, where was, what was your... What motivated you to um, take your particular master's at UCD? Um, I don't mind. You. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. No, no, go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. I, it's like, I was like, uh, oh, um, yeah, no, I don't have much to say, really. I was just saying that um, I did my undergrad in uh, history and geography um, in UCD and I did I didn't actually know what GIS was until about you know I'd say about the second or third year and we did a module in it and just found it very interesting kind of combined computers and geography which were two things I was very much liked so it seemed like the perfect combination um, and then I ended up just UCD was I was the first year um, that they that they had that master's program on um so i was delighted when they said they were having one so i said i'd just go and go and join that and i ended up really liking it um so and i said yeah i'll, I'll do my uh, hopefully follow a career in it then um, so that was just that was just me anyway how i did it but thanks yeah for for me i did my undergrad in political science and i knew that i didn't necessarily want to go into politics but um COVID, I had always debated a master's and then COVID hit and I really was not enjoying my job. So I kind of found UCD because I could use my politics background, but be able to kind of look in a lot of different areas to see what I wanted to do. Um, so I got to take classes in politics, but I also took like ArcGIS, um, cyber, some fieldwork classes and kind of found new interests, which was really nice. <sighs> Um, alrighty, so thank you both so much for that. 
Um, I think the next thing I kind of want to move on to is if you think back to the program itself, um, were there any particular highlights from your experience, any particular modules maybe, or lectures, um, anything at all that strikes you as something that, you know, a fond memory of your master's? I think a few of the guys touched on it in their intros there, but um, I guess like the multidisciplinary nature of the, um, like all the different streams of the master, the geography masters, you know, like in the geospatial data analysis, you kind of start out with some, let's say more technical stuff, getting used to the basics. Um, but then, you know, into your second semester and your thesis, you can really, you know, you get so much room to kind of explore and, you know, bring what you've learned into your own interests. So for example, like my thesis was kind of based on uh, coastal erosion in Wexford. Um, so spent five or six months on that and I thought, well, I'm pretty happy to get to be finished with that when I submitted the thesis. But as it turns out in Arup now, they've kind of given me a bit more funding to continue that research. So and try and develop it into like a, a tool that we would bring to clients. So, you know, just a chance to explore your interests, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the collaboration piece as well in the masters, I know Dylan touched upon it, that people were, people are from different streams and stuff like that, but um, certainly the collaboration between different masters. So I would have been on the critical geography masters, but if we were working with someone from uh, geospatial or political geographies or something like that and um, you were learning from each other and you could really take some insights from what they were doing on their thesis and potentially bring them across or generate some ideas or gel some ideas together I think that was that really helped me and it's definitely helped me into my job as well because I think any job anyone goes into you're going to be collaborating with people all the time so they're really good skills to gain and good experience Thanks so much for that. Um, the next question I have kind of in the same vein, but a little bit uh, separate is um, if there are any sort of particularly strong memories that you have from your degree, whether they're good or whether they're bad, we want to get the full experience of it. Um, any, you know, particularly strong memories of your degree and sort of what, and if you could expand on, you know, what that was like for you, that would be great. Yeah, I'm happy to continue on there actually and um, so we were the first trip to go to Vietnam with uh, Christine um, as part of the part of the work back in 2016 and then um, that was that was a uh, hugely hugely beneficial again we got to collaborate with each other and also meet different people from from around different industries so it was a really strong memory I'd say one of the worst parts was preparing for Vietnam because we got to get the visa sorted um, there was obviously it's quite it can be quite a closed country in some aspects so we had lots of fun kind of trying to get visas get into the country where we're we doing research where we're we doing that and um, so it was it was an interesting time there um so for me i'd say definitely the dissertation because i feel like you know it, it was um the last bit of our masters the most intense one at, well at least for me and, you know, it was just the occasion we could just, everything that we had learned so far, we could sort of apply it to our case. And for me as well, it was one of the first time I could actually really sort of conduct some research, which I'm actually, which I'm very well, passionate about. And so, you know, um, yeah. Great memories, I'd say, but definitely the dissertation, a, a big bit of this master's. Ready. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. No, 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 uh, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I, I guess for me, the, I mean, yeah, good memory was the work that, that we had with, with, with Professor uh, Alon Johnson, for yeah, we, we did a piece on COVID and, 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 and pandemic it was pretty challenging because all the interviews that, that were supposed to, to, 
happened in Brussels, they were all moved online due to COVID. But yeah, I guess with the group of, ge of geopolitics, we, we show a really um, united team. And, and, and yeah, I guess like that definitely like um, boosted my, my teamwork skills in that sense. I don't know if Natalie will, 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 wants to come in on that as well. Yeah, I was going to say that as well, that the field work was my favorite part, even though it was meant to be international and we were stuck behind our screens in our living rooms. But um, it was, yeah, it was like a week of 10 hour days, but it was really enjoyable. So. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for that. I think it's definitely interesting in that regard. Um, last year when we did this, we couldn't, we didn't really have quite the same experience of um, people who did their masters in the middle of COVID. So it's quite interesting to see the difference between say, Jonathan's experience where you had it started and finished before COVID and then, you know, for Giorgio and Natalie, where you were literally sitting on Zoom calls for most of your lectures and your and the like. So it's quite interesting to see how the differentiations between those. Um, I think one last thing I kind of want to talk about in regards to, you know, your experience of the masters itself is, um, you know, is there anything you wish you knew about the masters, something that maybe you discovered as you were doing it that you wish you had known before going into it? This is a lot of fun. I don't know if it'll show on the recording, but I'm looking at um, six panelists who are thinking very, very hard about this. Um, so, I mean, if I, it's, if, if, oh, Dylan, it looks like you want to jump in there. Yeah, I mean, I was just gonna, you know, talk about the COVID perspective of it. Like, I mean, I think at the start of last year, we probably, oh, I, I, I think we would have presumed we were going in a lot more than we ended up doing. I think, I think I went in, twice all year it was only once all year but you know it's hard to have foresight for that but but um yeah I don't know what you guys are doing this year hopefully you're going in a bit more you'll be pleased to know we are sort of for the most <laughs> part we're in we're in person it's kind of hybrid depending on circumstances but um, we are spending a lot more time in classes this year thankfully <laughs> And Good to hear. <laughs> Alrighty, and with that, I wonder we can we'll we'll kind of move on from the masters. Unless there's any sort of final um, comments that people want to make, I'd be interested in moving from the masters on to where you all find yourselves now. So, in that regard, I mean, we've already had a chance to chat about it briefly. But if anyone has any sort of other little fun quirks along their career pathway, sort of what's your career path? been like since graduating from your master's at UCD? Um, I don't mind hopping in there. Um, when I graduated from the master's, I actually got um, a job working at the ICON group during the master's. Um, so that actually is something yet yeah, that I, so I really wanted to kind of get working and things like that. But in hindsight now, actually, I should have mentioned this. This is probably for better for the previous question <laughs> about something that you wish you knew. Um, I think working full time and doing the thesis at the same time was very difficult. So um, I would recommend to anyone um, to really just dedicate, if you can, uh, of course, um, and have the time to just dedicate it to the thesis over the summer um, because it was very long days of working nine to five and then having to go to a coffee shop and then write my thesis until like 10 o'clock at night. Um, so yeah, so that was difficult, but I really enjoyed working there. And we were mostly doing earth observation work, um, remote sensing, kind of just um, working on a government project. So it was in the Department of Agriculture. And then Esri were advertising their graduate program and their uh, GIS company uh, that make Arc GIS, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. <laughs> so um, yeah, so then they were advertising a graduate program and I said, sure, I'll, I'll go for this. And I ended up getting it thankfully uh, myself and one other guy and yeah, different, various different rotations. I was six months on tech support, which was very good because I was able to get a good overall understanding because uh, there is Arc map, I suppose, 
and then there's Arc Pro, but there's so many <laughs> different um, aspects to ArcGIS, uh, so many different products. Uh, there's a whole online, they're trying to go more ArcGIS online at the moment. Um, so the master's really helped at that, kind of getting a grip to grips on all of that. Um, but yeah, then I went into sales, marketing, um, which is mostly kind of doing t technical pre-sales. So you were, um, doing demos for customers of the software to try and like convince them to buy it <laughs> and which was fun I really enjoyed doing that actually um because you get to see the good side of things you know when they're they're happy you know so it's like they're all interested and you can show them the software and it was good experience I got loads of experience with the different products that ArcGIS have and yeah then professional services where you're working on various different projects um, and for customer clients. So that was a bit more technical. You'd be setting up servers and um, things like that. So you get a kind of range of interacting with customers, but also uh, the technical side of things as well. So a bit of coding, a bit of Python. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at the moment. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um, does anyone else want to jump in there? I feel the next question might be um, very interesting for a couple of people, but um, if anyone else wants to, uh, chat, chat a little bit more about their pathways into UCD, um, you're more than welcome to. Okie dokie. We will then move swiftly on to um, our next question. Um, I feel, I'll say this now, I feel this question may be a little bit more tailor-made for one or two of you, and it'll become very apparent which one or two I think, but um, obviously um, it's, it's very open. I want to I want to know if I want to know sort of a little bit more about what it's like working where you're working now, what you're or where you are now, and sort of um, you know what the day to day is like for you, um, particularly sort of what sort of skills you're using that you might have acquired during your masters, um, what sort of uh, and, and where your experience from your masters is helpful to you today. Um, well, I knew nothing about cybersecurity before I started my master's, and I didn't even know I really liked it. Um, I just kind of realized when I was writing my thesis that I did not like writing, and I, and I don't consider myself a great writer, so I kind of figured um, like policy analysis roles that I wanted weren't going to be the best fit. Um, but yeah, with, with mine, I took a class. It was um, through actually the American Studies Department in the politics of cybersecurity. And I just found it really, really interesting. Um, and then obviously geopolitics kind of touches on any company that is multinational. So I use all of that experience. Um, but even more so than what I learned in cyber, I think I use kind of the skills from the classes more. Um, like in Alan's class, we did a lot of, like Georgia was saying, we would, were writing interview questions and just being very specific with your language. Um, that almost is the most useful thing I got, I got out of the masters, so. Yeah, I think I'd echo uh, Natalie's points there, especially at the end around um, the kind of social skills that you get out of, say, interviewing people as well. So for instance, when I was in, Vietnam like you know we had a certain time slot with um certain people we were interviewing and you know they weren't going to go over half an hour you had to really tailor your questions you had to really critically think about what what you need to get across the line and that's the same my day-to-day -day job you know if I'm talking to a COO or a manager or something like that and um, I have to be sure what I'm asking is the correct correct uh, question I'm not wasting anyone's time and that you know um you have the ability to probe and stuff like that as well. So I think those skills, certainly interviewing skills and um, critical thinking, especially, and also the ability to interact with people from all different backgrounds, which is a huge part of geography um, as well. You know, and um, the kind of knowledge that gives you and the skills that gives you and the buy-in that will give you from a person you're working with, it's, it's really important and shouldn't be discounted. I will get that if you do a geography masters for sure. And so for me, um, so 50% of my time is like dedicated to uh, teaching seminars and uh, 50, the other 50 is about doing some research for myself and like about writing my um, 
project, or like thesis project, let's say. So, and in the masters, I've decided to really focus on um, and specialize in feminist and queer uh, approaches to geographies. And so I feel like I'm just, you know, using all my readings and uh, the stuff I learned in, during the lectures to really um, work on my project and to, you know, make something that will be sort of interesting, I hope. So, voila. Uh, yeah. Uh, so be, 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 before my master, I I didn't really know lots about like uh, read getting into research and data uh, 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 analysis. Then yeah, as Natalie said, like I uh, we did a lot uh, qualitative data for international field work. And then for, for, for my dissertation, I used mixed uh, mixed uh, data analysis, both qualitative and quantitative. And now it's it's, uh, it's been very useful uh, during during my current job as a as a, as, a, as I need to to use. Lots of Excel, so quantitative analysis, doing interviews with clients from from profit organization. So yeah, I guess like what what, what the masters gave me has been very helpful in my, in my current job with Twenty. Yeah, I'll just jump in quickly on that one as well. Um, I guess like the kind of jobs that I'm working on at the moment can be, you know, all sorts of things. And um, my master's in particular, you know, gave me a good introduction to kind of all aspects of GIS, geospatial kind of analysis, um, you know, even to like the automation side of things, talking to other graduates, they don't necessarily get that. Um, they don't get that introduction and it kind of you know leaves you pretty well positioned for say geospatial and data science kind of collaborative projects so yeah all righty um thank you all so much for that um i'm just looking at my questions list here and um rather ironically i think um that kind of answered the next you guys all kind of answered the next four questions I have. So we'll move a little bit further down the list. Um, uh, I suppose, are there any, have there been any sort of challenges? I know, obviously, um, you know, either in your, either sort of in the transition from masters to the professional sphere or sort of just kind of, was there any sort of, or kind of really just any challenges you had with the, either in the process of getting to where you are now or, you know, just in, even in the masters as well, uh, if there's, if anyone wants to jump in on that. Well, uh, uh, for, for, like for, for me, for Morgan, for, for I guess also so for Nata, one of the main challenges was COVID, but yeah, I, I, there were like some periods it was very, very challenging, you know, because of course throughout the year, all the lectures were, were, were online, all the activities. But yeah, at the end, I guess it's important that uh, I, 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 I made the, 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 the the most uh, 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 out of it. So I feel like maybe for non-native speakers, uh, might be a bit daunting at first to, uh, you know, do a degree in another language than yours. But, um, you know, I think we just get used to it and 
just got to keep going and it's going to be okay. We might just have to work a bit more, but you know, I mean, for me, that was what, what was daunting a bit at first, but then it got pretty okay. And sort of to counterbalance that, um, I wonder if there have been any sort of super, there, well, not super, what's the number? If there have been, you know, any particularly great achievements that you're proud of, um, you're not allowed to say your thesis, um, but if there's any, if there's any achievements either since your, either since your master's or where you are now, any achievements that you're particularly proud of that you think, you know, geography helped you get to? Yeah, for me, I'd say um, being selected is by Deloitte to represent um, them at One Young World in 2021. So for anyone who doesn't know One Young World, it's basically a summit for people that say companies or institutions like UCD consider young leaders um, to kind of all come together, there, listen to speakers, really inspiring stories, and also um, kind of just connect and gel with ideas, to create a network out of that. So I think that's 100% one of my proud achievement states and it's definitely been backed up by the geography masters I did so the critical geography is really understanding how the world works and bringing that into my work as well because I'm keen always to kind of give back I'm lucky enough to be in the position I am in so I'm always keen to give back whether that's on a local or international scale and I've made that a key part of my work as well so Deloitte they're a great employer to really empower you to give back as well and um, so they'll give you time off work to do like a, a charity event or something like that and when I got the email say in the summer last year saying you've been selected and um, to represent Deloitte at One Young World and um, I was over the moon and you know I'd really look back on the geography masters and the geography undergrad has really helped me get to that stage and kind of keep me level-headed always with the kind of give back mentality. Thank you so much for that, everyone. It was wonderful to hear sort of, you know, what the space is like for you in the now giving, I know, a I recognize a couple of the names in the chat at the moment. I know there are a couple of people who are current master students. So kind of seeing what the sort of next steps are like is really reassuring to myself and to the rest of us who are kind of taking on our masters at the moment. Um, I wonder now, this could be an interesting discussion. There may not necessarily be um, a lot of concrete answers yet, but that's totally fine because the future is unpredictable. Um, but in terms of thinking about the future and sort of next steps for you all, um, what ambitions do you guys still have? You know, what, where do you see yourself progressing on to? Once again, for people who are watching this uh, in the recording, I'm seeing a lot of very thoughtful faces. Um, again, I understand it's a very heavy question to be asked with um, very little um, preparation. So we can, if people, if if people want a little bit more time to think, that's totally fine. Um, I don't mind. How, I don't mind uh, jumping in here as well. Um, yeah, I think for me, um, I definitely want to stay in the GIS field. And um, I really like, like working for Esri Ireland and a good taste of all different sides of it, like both the technical and then there's, you know, the commercial side as well. Um, so I definitely have realised before I always kind of thought, you know, I was very into the technical side of things. Um, but I suppose kind of as time has progressed, I've realised that I just enjoy the people aspect of it more so in a way it can combine both of them so um still being able to use the software still getting a chance to uh you know work on projects and things but also having that kind of customer interaction as well is really nice and just being able to talk to people about gis and talking positively about it and, and its uses um is just really nice um so i'm hoping to kind of stay in in this field <laughs> uh for the next while anyway, so thank you. Yeah, um, going off that, I'm kind of the opposite. I'd like to get a bit more technical. Um, I think that this master is kind of made, well, I already knew, but I do like really like school and I really like studying. I'm quite jealous of Morgane for getting her PhD, but um, just kind of getting like a few more certifications as they relate to my 
to my field. So like more of the technical cyber ones or even just um, moving into more kind of risk risk assessments and based approaches to things um, I'd like to do here in the near future, so. Yeah, I'd say uh, maybe similar to Natalie, like, um, yeah, I'm kind of just opening my eyes to that world of like, um, like the GIS developer, you know, there's a whole computer science aspect to it that I'm only really exploring at the moment. So just being able to kind of write my own uh, scripts with, um, you know, say Python and Java and the likes and being able to operate them within either ArcGIS or other GIS softwares are available. <laughs> Um, well, for me, I'd love to just, I hope, pursue an academic career and then, you know, become a researcher and write just articles and stuff. So, yeah, really just pursuing this uh, academic path that I took with a PhD. Yeah, I think um, for me, probably working in business and stuff like that, um, I've been part of that one year world community. I've been lucky enough to connect with people from different businesses and see the kind of vision that, uh, say, young people want nowadays for businesses. So I'm really keen to drive that on and form what they call a Generation B. It's basically, you know, what younger people want businesses to do. So, for instance, if we were in charge of a business now, would we be partnering with people from certain parts of the world? I don't think so. So, you know, it's really driving that generation be kind of um, forward and seeing how many businesses we can get on board with that. Um, a lot of businesses are changing, but it's it's really businesses are the agents of change. That's one thing I've learned. You know, politicians often let us down um, and partnering with institutions like UCD will really help that. So it's really something I want to drive forward. All right, well, thank you all so much for that. I think I have one last question I want to ask before we go on to questions from the audience. Um, uh, it's sort of, if you had, if you could give what, well, um, what advice would you offer to prospective students who are considering a master's degree, whether this is advice that you got yourself from someone else or, you know, you know, something that you came up yourself, um, just an idea, just what you, what you would, if you could give one piece of advice, we'll keep it to that because of time constraints. If you could give one piece of advice to incoming graduate students or to graduates of a master's course, what would that be? I'd say my, my advice would be to consider like like a journey, you know, because like, I think for me, all the, the course, all the coursework and the dissertation, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was really like like a journey. It, it might seem something big, but yeah, if you think like uh, if you enjoy, uh, I, I, I guess uh, every single moment of that, uh, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, for me, I'd say just go in with an open mind and don't have any preconceptions coming in and um, be willing to learn. Um, even if, if you have a pure thesis topic, and I know Christine will speak to this for me as well. Um, you know, I had a pure thesis topic, which I was going to go into, did something completely different. Um, because the more I learned, the more I got interested in something else. So if you have that open mind, um, the world's your oyster, to be honest. Yeah, kind of um, going off that, like take the classes that kind of scare you or make you nervous. Um, I know I signed up for a few classes that I just really, I knew nothing about. And that's kind of where I learned the most and also kind of not only about the subject, but about myself and what I was interested in, so. Yeah, I might just add to it, like don't doubt yourself too much. Like just try your best and you know go ahead and yeah you'll see but it's gonna it, it should definitely work out <laughs> Alrighty, um i suppose i'm kind of just conscious of the times so 
unless there's any sort of final thoughts any of you guys have, we might move over to um, Q&A. Just for those in the audience who do have questions, you can pop them into the chat there. I have Alana and Shifra on standby who are going to be creating them and we'll be asking them shortly. Um, so if you could do that, that would be fantastic. But while we're waiting for that to happen, if, if, if there are any final thoughts, just any commentaries or obs observations you'd like to make, whether it pertains to one of the questions we've had already or not, I'm leaving the floor open to you guys. Um, so I suppose, well, again, I think I'll sort of take a little bit of a backseat here. Um, Alana, Shifra, if you guys want to take over with some of the questions that are coming in, we're seeing one or two, so I'll leave it in your hands. Yeah, um, thanks, John. So the first question is, for those working in geospatial data analysis, which programming languages would you primarily use, and to what extent did the geospatial master analysis cover them? Um, I guess I, I, I suppose because I did mine uh, two years ago, um, I'll, I guess um, I'm not sure if it's been if it's been added or maybe Dylan will be able to uh, weigh in on that a bit more. But I know that mostly what's used anyway is Python and uh, JavaScript. Um, so Python is definitely one of the main ones, um, I think. So I've been doing a bit of that uh, myself. I didn't. Had a, a, a small taste of it on the master's, but um, a lot of that has been afterwards. Um, but yeah, that's just, um, but yeah, I don't know if, uh, if Dylan has anything more to add to that. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, when I went into the job I'm in now, there was a few people on my team that already had Python. And uh, to be honest, I didn't realize it was kind of that, you know, prominent in GIS, um, but I didn't go in with with any kind of program and I don't think you'd be expected to as a grad. I mean, if you I don't think well last year they they didn't really cover it either, but what they did cover was automation in terms of the model builder in ArcGIS. If you do the advanced GIS, you should get um experience with that. But um, yeah, we did that. Yeah. Um but if you wanted to, you know, have an extra thing to talk about in an interview, you might go ahead, do a few tutorials on ArcPy on YouTube or um, Google Earth Engine. There's good um, tutorials on YouTube as well. So Google Earth Engine would be JavaScript and then ArcPy, obviously Python. So there you go. Uh, thank you so much. So the next question is also for those of you working in GIS. So was there any specific pathways such as internships or emailing other people uh, that you would recommend to build more connections within the industry? Uh, yeah, I mean, I did a intern, an internship, was it say February to um, May of my master's. Um, and I know it was good for um, sending us emails around and she was well connected, you know, she'd always get emails and pass them on to the class. So, I mean, that was a great, you know, extra thing on my CV when I was applying for full time employment then. Um, I suppose in terms of connecting, um, I'm not sure off the top of my head now, but feel free to uh, link me on or get me on LinkedIn and I might have another think about it. Um, yeah, I can I can just add to that, I suppose, as well. Um, I know it was great for um, kind of GIS uh, connections. Um, I was able to get a job in Icon Group and through the Masters. So that was a great experience, um, definitely. And yeah, I'd say um, in terms of connecting um, with the industry, um, I'd say LinkedIn is probably a good a good shout as well um, because, uh, yeah, a lot of people, um, and he's not even just like firing a message. If anyone wants to send me a message or anything as well, they're, they're very much welcome to. Um, and, yeah, I'd say 
there's lots of people working in uh, in GIS that'd be all very happy to to kind of help and answer any questions. Um, they had messaged them on LinkedIn or something like that. Um, definitely. And in terms of, I didn't do an internship, I suppose, but uh, the graduate program is also another kind of uh, stepping stone as well, um, because. I, when the graduate program ends, um, you know, they're not just going to kick you out. <laughs> you can, uh, you can, you can stay and, uh, yeah, they're going to hire you and find a place for you in the company and stuff. So, yeah. I just popped a link in the chat there. It's, um, it's a way to volunteer your GIS skills. So you can have a look at that in your own time. <laughs> That's great. Could I just ask, is there any way that any of our audience could get in contact with you via email or LinkedIn if you guys maybe want to fire them into the chat or um, send us your emails and we'll send them out or whatever, whatever works best for you guys. If you feel comfortable with that, of course, sorry. <laughs> I, we do have um, email addresses, I think, for all of you. So. Um, Definitely, if you guys are comfortable with that, um, we could uh, we could use that as a point of call. But um, if there's any other way that potential participants could reach you, particularly people who may not necessarily be here in person but are very much interested in your pathways or in your sort of areas, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Alrighty, for those who are. Um, watching and post we do have a couple of linkedin uh, links going into um the chat here into the chat here from some of the panelists um if anybody wants to re get reach out to reach out to some of these panelists uh following this event um if i even if i could just get a thumbs up from some of you guys obviously i have email addresses um am i able to send those on just so that they can get in touch um, brilliant stuff i'm seeing head nods seeing thumbs up fantastic so if you do want to get in touch about any of that, uh, I think the easiest way to reach us is to get in touch by Instagram. Uh, the the Instagram handle for the Geography Society is UCD UCDGeogsoc, U-C-D-G-E-O-G-S-O-C. You can find us there. Uh, just flick us an email and we, you flick us text rather because that's how they work on Instagram. And um, we can send that information on to you. Um, we'll give a little, we, have a, we still have a teensy bit more time, so I'll give an opportunity for anyone else to ask any last questions they may have or if any of the panelists have any final thoughts any final piece of advice they'd like to give the floor is yours yeah i think a couple of points for me probably as well um gis is obviously a massive industry i'm i know expert in in it but it's becoming huge um so whether you're in a roof or whether you're part of Deloitte or whether you're in any company it's it's going to become huge so um certainly don't let that like there's going to be career opportunities in it i see it in in the company i work for you know they're setting up and their own unit there as well um and companies more and more are looking into the sustainability space as well so that's becoming huge in terms of sustainability strategy and actually like implementing um sustainable practices so if like careers in geography will help with that um or sorry, background and masters in geography will help with jobs in that space. And um, whether that's GIS or a non-technical masters, you know, like don't have any apprehension about taking a masters in geography. If I don't know, say your parents or someone else is pressuring you, don't know, like, oh, go do law, don't do geography, you know. But if you want to do geography, go do it, guys. Like, um, you know, it's there's huge opportunities in there. Worlds transforming now. Um, you know, COVID, climate crisis, geopolitics, there's huge opportunities there. So um, don't feel apprehensive about jumping in. Alrighty. I think, thank you so much for that, Donovan. And um, I think you might call it there. So um, once again, thank you all for coming out today and particularly thank you to Morgan, Giorgio, Jonathan, Dylan, Natalie, and Catherine for giving us an hour out of your busy schedules to chat with us a little bit about the opportunities that we have as as master students, as protect as prospective master students, and what awaits us uh, beyond this. 
uh, to the people who are in attendance. Thank you so much for coming out today. It's really great to see uh, people invested in these events. And I hope that we were able to provide something helpful for you all. So I'm going to cut the recording here in a second. Uh, thank you all so much for coming along. Take care and have a lovely evening.